This is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about... About the uh, destruction of the Republican Party by the, by the unions because the American people are demanding unionism in this nation. What? Well, that's what, what? That's what, what, are you getting that's that what the press said this morning, that it is all over for the Republican parties because the people are rebelling against their draconian attitude towards unions. And that the people support the unions because of all the great things the unions are doing for them. Like, uh, like the fact that the guy at McDonald's doesn't have the benefits that the guy cleaning the toilets over at school does. Oh. Yeah, and and, the, uh, and the, let's put it this way. And the guy working his butt off putting your roofs on for a, for a company doesn't have the benefits of, um, of a school teacher. Well, and yet he's paying a salary to a school teacher. Yeah, but part of it is it doesn't want the government employees. Yeah, that's the whole problem. They said what happens is is that um, the, the, the Democrats over decades have basically uh, did sweetheart deals with, with public sector unions in order to get their support for re-election. Knowing full well, okay, let's put it this way, the people that created those deals could actually add and subtract. They knew that eventually it was like a pyramid scheme. There wouldn't be enough people to Is that like Social deals. Security? Yeah. <laughs> not well, I mean, Social Security is not a pyramid scheme. It's just that if you look at the statistics as to how many people there are seeing the baby boom generation yeah. versus other generations, and people are living longer, then you realize when you do the calculations, you're eventually going to run out of money. Well, yeah, but they didn't, okay, somebody along the line never figured that people were going to live to be into their 80s or 90s. Yeah, but see, that affects Social Security, it also affects unions, because what they paid into the unions, they have union benefits, the right? The union benefits, and because the union benefits, okay, the, basically what has happened is a great percentage of the union, okay, I'll give you an example, and she's got no relationship to unions, I have lots of relationship to unions. The only relationship I have with unions is when we worked on projects and I just knew that it cost a lot more to use unions and in certain situations you had to use unions because it was a union zone yeah. or the client requested it or whatever have you. But I've been involved in three unions, all of which were busted by the union heads. All of them. They basically, one of the unions built, they built a brand new headquarters for $11 million. Of course, the union dues that was coming in wasn't enough to cover the cost of the headquarters, mm -hmm. and the union went up under. Another union, the union president decided to build himself several houses and have lots of girls. He went to jail, of course. And a third union, well, they simply couldn't pay the bills anyway. So my father was a member. My father was a member of the Aerospace Workers Union, the Teamsters Union, and the uh, and he was uh, uh, United Auto Workers. My father was a uh, automobile engineer, so he was a member of those unions. But each one of the unions basically when it came to when it came to the time for my father to need their assistance, none of them. Not a single one of them. Not one of those unions that he paid into even would cover his burial expenses. Oh really? Even though he paid Are they supposed to? Yeah, he paid for decades on a plan for, you know, to have a lavish burial. No, nope, we had to pay for it ourselves because there we couldn't find any of the unions that he belonged to that would honor their, well, we no longer honor that, and uh, we're sorry about that, but no, the problem was is that he paid the money into it and he never got the money back. Mm -hmm. So the, the unions basically... And then it was also on your mom's side, too. Yeah, my mother, my mother basically, she got, um, you know, my mother, but my mother basically worked for, a re she in the restaurant business most of her life, but she then went over into the um, grocery store business for a large grocery store chain. The unions basically, when she retired, she was supposed to have $400,000 in pack, package and benefits and all that. They uh, had no money uh, because they'd used the money for political campaigns. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, she um, um, ended up having to settle for like, they offered her $40 a month for life or $6,000 on a $400,000 package. Yeah, wow. Big deal. See, so part of it is when we talk about unions, I mean, you've had unions, I mean, all around your family for a long, for decades. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, we, okay, we've got the, uh, my father's been in construction business, so he had the, he had the plumbers, the carpenters, the, uh, you know, the people that do, you know, this is specialty stuff back there, that's not carpentry, that's finished work back there. You know, you got that tile, actually, I'm a tile person, I'm a tile person myself, but I don't belong to that union. But, um, 
uh, the Screen Actors Guild, the Directors Guild. I mean, I've been around so many unions, same as my father, my father's stuntmen association. The you know, ADs, assistant, you know, that was assistant director because my father was that. My grandmother was a script supervisor. So you talk about just the walls of unions, and I mean, I basically, when I was working, I worked for people that did the very best that they could do to stay out of the union zone to work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they would basically, it's the only way you could get major stars to work on television things or in low budget movies was that if you didn't work in the union zone, they could work in a project. I mean, they're perfectly happy to take $10,000 and go home. Mm -hmm. Can't do that if you're a union, if you're working in a union project, I mean, you can make a project for less than amount, less than a certain thing, and it's one skill. But if you go over that thing, which actually everything done today is over that figure, yeah. you have to pay the union rules, which means you got to. Well, we've seen, we, we, because we actually go buy a lot of these union shoots. Do you think that's why, like, most of the superheroes are now out of the states? Yeah, because they said they can no longer afford. This is a good one. The country that created the action movie can no longer shoot action movies in the United States because they can't afford the union wages. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, that's why a lot of our shows, you know, the sci-fi things, you'll see them being done in, in Vancouver, Canada, because you have all the, you can't you know, have all this help over there. You see special effects being done in England. You see cartooning being done in China and. Um, and Taiwan. Well, and, it's lower cost of labor. Yeah, because you can't afford the labor. I mean, it's and then now because they've added 3D to things, they can't. The, the the processing is too high in the United States, so they send it out of the country to have it done over there too. Mm -hmm. Which means you can't. Which means you're using uh, film editors out of this country. I mean, it's not like the film editors actually. Film editors who really are really the backbone. I think get the shaft, folks. I mean, I, I did not believe that they haven't had a wage increase in so god awful long because oh, really? because any because what it amounts to is uh, you want to cut and, <coughs> and now because you can do it with a computer. I mean, like I heard um okay here's a I, there's a television show on where they said the union price union wages had got so high that one of the act one of the one of the people on the show that did special effects said that. We, they can go out, the network can go out and hire a kid, a high school kid with a supercomputer and do what we were doing before. So, you know, basically, you know, my husband and I are exploring, looking into making porno films to pay the bills now. Mm -hmm. Because they, they went from making a fortune down to nothing. Because if, if I mean, I, I have one of these supercomputer type things too. It's basically I can do everything on. And, um, but I also am a trained editor sound and video and film so I do know what I'm doing I mean she's learning I mean you know I've got 50 years experience at the editing she's learning and she's gaining soon she'll learn that, that basically what makes an editor is slash and cut slash cut and splice that's how you edit <laughs> yeah but um, the unions though I mean I come from it came from an era at the when the unions were basically at their peak and remember the unions did great things in this country my grandfather belonged to uh, uh, meat. One well, of my grandfather belonged to the Meat Cutters Union, and the Meat Cutters Union was one of those organizations that helped to say, you know, help to um, correct the food problems in this nation, because they, like Sinclair Lewis, and you know, he wrote about the you know, uh, about the problems with the Chicago meat butcher, you know, the stockyards, the butchering business, how the unsafe conditions. Uh, Samuel Gumpers, who helped found the United, I think, United Steel Workers Union, he he helped correct the safety problems. The people that helped correct the problems, you know, and the um, you know, like in the garment industry, they really had a purpose. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is as these unions grew, they forgot the purpose. I mean, the, the, what happens is the government legislates safety now. Government legislates wages. Government. They wages, do. Yeah, and so they're legislating that. The union only has one purpose now, and that's to basically um, the feather bed. It's why only 11% of the people in this nation are now union members, because unions drive the cost. Okay, Southern California's housing industry is in the problems it is, because I think it going six times more to build a house in Southern California than it does anywhere else in the United States. Yeah, really? Six times, yeah. Where basically you can make like, twenty dollars a foot to build a home in, uh, you know, a really a luxurious home in uh, Arizona, in Phoenix, it can run $120 a, a foot to build a house in California. Mm -hmm. The homes, I mean, 
my father used to build luxury homes. Well, I mean, actually, I don't know if she saw them or not, but we did, you know. Um, no, she never actually got to see any of them. But uh, she came in at the end of that period when my father was getting old and retired. But uh, he would build 2,400 square foot homes on two and a half acres of ground and charge between twenty and thirty thousand dollars for them. Wow. Yeah. And then the unions came in and started building homes across the, the street from where he was building and said that, well, you can't build your homes unless you hire the union workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, the, the homes, the identical, my father, you know, the identical home, basically what happened was they, they uh, used the same architect and they would just reverse the, the designs on the mm -hmm. house. And the same home that he was selling for twenty thirty thousand all of a sudden was going for two hundred thousand dollars. Really? That much of a difference? That much of a difference. Were people Ten, paying for it? People paid for it because they couldn't get the other homes. You could not get a brand new home built for less than two hundred thousand dollars in that area anymore. So what he did was he then picked up, got away from the unions, went to another area, you know, up the house to forty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And guess what happened? You the know, unions came over the there. The unions came over and started building a housing development over there. Housing developments, the homes over there were being uh, sold for two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars and they were god awful small homes on little on little plots. And, but you couldn't, you know, they said, well, you can't build these $45,000 homes here. You know, you, you know, if you don't use union workers, we'll put you out of business. So my father just simply stopped building. Yeah, that's the way it works. You, you shut down a business that's supplying, a fa you know, multiple families because the people have worked for years for my, basically, my grandfather was in, my grandfather was in a pink, uh, painting business in Los Angeles. My father was an engineer and he was also, um, in the acting business, he was at his time and stuff. But he basically, in this, in the, in that, in, in an entertainment industry, you have to have a secondary career, and there was not a lot of cars being built in Los Angeles anymore. So, so when the automobile industry fell into the fold, he basically started doing other jobs to help pay the bills. One of them was building houses because he'd been around it all his life, and it, it could actually read a blueprint because he was an engineer. So, <laughs> but. Um, he, it, it just got to the point where the cost of hiring a union wage worker is 80 miles of house and home. So, um, mm. I understand the unions had their benefits. Today, like, it, 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 you know, um, a lot of what they're wanting done is actually totally and absolutely unreasonable. But the problem is, is that the unions didn't have collective bargaining until a few years ago. Uh -huh. Under California, the unions did not have collective bargaining until Jerry Brown became governor. It is still basically illegal for any public service union uh, worker to strike. Oh, it is? Yeah, they, they do it anyway. They do it anyway because they know they're not going to be fired. When you know you're not going to be fired, you can do anything you want. You know that you're not going to fire a teacher. You know you're not going to... Why can't they fire them? Because uh, the union rules. That you can, a teacher basically can screw up, do nothing. I, mean, I heard yesterday talking, okay, they said Milwaukee has one of the re worst educational records in the entire United States, and they're talking about how higher benefits allow the teachers to better teach the students. Uh, yeah. And they, they're basically not learning anything. We need smaller crew, we need smaller plan. They said, we need, okay, then they get it. Well, if you want the students taught better, we need better, we need smaller classrooms and more teachers. That will solve the problem. Well, mm -hmm. we gave people smaller classrooms with more teachers in Los Angeles, and guess what happened to the educational level? What happened? Oh, really? Everywhere you give them what they want, the educational level goes down. Because, I mean, I actually, um, you know, I went to school in Culver City, and they we're talking about one room where all of the kids were put in one room. Are you serious? Yeah. How did they do that? Because the teachers actually cared about what they were doing. It also meant that everybody was learning more. Because everybody you had... Everybody in one room? Yeah. One great big room. Wow. You know? Because, you know, the event, you know, as more people moved in, of course, the, you know, the schools got bigger. You know, go to two rooms, three rooms, four rooms. But clean up until uh, when I started in college, you know, 50 years ago. Actually, yeah, more than 55 years ago. 55. 55 years ago, but um, the teachers all cared about what they were doing, and then they got this word, tenured. When you're tenured, you can't be fired for any reason on earth. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, like, did you know that you, that, uh, that um, postal, postal delivery people do not have to uh, deliver the mail every day? They don't? No. 
Why the, not? Because they, uh, there's no rule that says they have. The mail must be delivered, but there's no such thing as when it has to be delivered. As long as the mail is delivered, I, we ran into that. We were expecting for checks to come in the mail, and we kept waiting. We called, you know, what happened to the blankety blank checks? And, you know, my mother was a pencil bookkeeper, so besides other things, so she calls them up. Well, we sent those things out last month. They said, well, I haven't got them. Mm -hmm. And then my father, you know, my father, you know, and we haven't got any mail for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. That seems strange. You know, we weren't. We were getting magazines and other things, and no mail. And then we uh, we we wanted to find out what, and they went to the post office. The stuff was just all piled up because the delivery uh, man hadn't been delivering them. And we tried to get him fired, and they told us, no, you can't fire the postal worker. You know, because there's nothing in the law that says he has to deliver. As long as the mail is delivered, he's not done anything wrong. As long as it is delivered. But that could be next year. That's right. They have seen cases where, where they've seen cases where postal workers have basically put mail in storage sheds. Really? Yeah, because they didn't want to. They didn't want to spend the time going out and delivering the mail, so they just put it in a thing. And then they tried to prosecute him, prosecute the worker, and the worker said the mail got delivered, didn't it? <laughs> and and that's all that's required of a postal worker is that the mail gets delivered. So they couldn't prosecute him. He went back to work again. You have teachers in New York City that are paid not to work. Why so, would they be paid not to work? Uh, because of union rules. If the teacher had basically been, if the teacher has been naughty with one of the students, let's say, and they can't, they um, they can't fire them. They can't fire them. So they put them in a place where they go and work on their, they go work on books they're writing or, or work on. They actually pay them to go to college rather than to work <laughs> because they can't fire them. It's, uh, you know, right now, in, in Wisconsin, in one week, the, uh, the, the uh, governor of state gets to do away with the teachers union in one week. He told everybody to be back on the job. If they're not back on the job, he's got to fire the workers. Okay, I have taught. Mm -hmm. She can teach. All you have to do is to have a college degree, and you can teach, if you can basically uh, figure a field that you've got a degree in that you can be qualified to teach. You know, substitute workers make like $120 an hour. Are you serious? That's what I got paid. That was a long time ago, too. Yeah. So, I would, you know, sometimes I'd go in and substitute. I would make I need money for $120 an hour. Yeah. So, and then, and then you, you know, because you know the kids, you know, I, I would go in and can, you know, you know I, I, I always came up with the first question. Can any of you actually read? And they'd say, well, you know, they, they give you that blank look. And, well, then this makes this class easy. Because I'll just sit there and read to you today, you know, and the, the, the kids would be there and chewing, you know, so that's that's how that went in the, the 50s and 60s, folks. So we're talking, they really haven't cared, to, like the asphalt jungle where all these guys are, you know, the, where Vic Morrow and Jimmy Farr and all these others are playing teenagers in high school when they're actually in their 30s, yeah. World War II people playing. <laughs>